Hello and welcome back to Psych Ed. Have you ever noticed that you might perform a task differently when you're in front of other people compared to when you're not in front of other people? This may be due to a concept called social facilitation, which is a social psychological theory that deals with the ways in which people perform tasks differently when they're in front of people compared to when they're alone. So the concept of social facilitation theory was first introduced way back in 1898 by a guy called Norman Triplett. He noticed cyclists perform better competing with other cyclists compared to a cyclist simply pedaling against a clock or in a practice run. The theory of social facilitation also states that people are most likely to make errors when they are asked to do tasks they are not familiar with in the presence of observers or competitors. This is a twin theory, a twin concept called social inhibition. Norman Triplett, after observing the cyclist, took his experiment to a laboratory where he provided some children with strings and asked them to wind up a fishing line. His results showed that out of the 40 children, half worked faster when competing with other children, one quarter worked more slowly, and one quarter showed equal performance. So these results were conflicting and it's not until later that researchers began to understand why this might be the case. The next step in the development of the social facilitation theory came from a researcher named Allport. So it was actually Allport who coined the term social facilitation in 1924. Allport conducted various experiments placing participants either alone or in groups and the majority of the experiments showed that people in groups perform better than those placed alone. So being in a social situation facilitated performance. However, at this point in time, i.e. 1924, social facilitation was still limited and was simply understood as an increase in response merely from the sight or the sound of others making the same movement. It was Robert Zajonk, Dr. Zajonk, who provided the missing piece of the puzzle. In 1956, Zajonk conducted studies to figure out why some people performed better in the presence of others, while others' performance hindered. Going back to Triplett's observation, a good portion of the children worked faster when competing with others with the strings, the fishing lines. One quarter worked more slowly, and one quarter showed equal performance. So it was in the 1960s that Zajonk finally was able to provide the missing piece of the puzzle. In the mid-1960s, Robert Sajonk published an influential article on social facilitation that brought order to these inconsistent findings. He argued that the presence of others could bring about facilitated or impaired performance depending on the type of task being performed. When the task at hand was well learned, observers or co-actors could facilitate performance. But when the task was novel or unfamiliar, the presence of others could inhibit performance. Zajonk argued that the underlying reason for these differences was an arousal or a drive component. So according to what Zajonk called the drive theory, the presence of others evoked an undifferentiated arousal or drive that increased the likelihood of a dominant response. Now a dominant response is whatever response is most likely in that exact situation. In a well-learned or an easy, familiar task, the dominant response would be the correct answer. In novel or complex tasks, however, the dominant response is likely to be an incorrect answer. Zajong's distinction explained the inconsistencies which were found in social facilitation studies undertaken by Norman Triplett and Allport, and why tasks that involved well-established and fluid responses were improved by the presence of an audience or competitors but tasks that required problem-solving skills were impaired. Sajonk demonstrated support for this theory in one of the classic social psychology studies. And this is one of my favorite social psychology studies because instead of using the, the typical college students, Sajonk enlisted 72 female cockroaches. Blattis orientalis, if one wants to be scientific about it, to run an easy or difficult maze. So in addition to the difficulty of the maze, the junk manipulated whether the cockroach ran the maze with an audience of other cockroaches, the cockroaches were in clear boxes adjacent to the maze, or without a cockroach audience. The final critical factor was whether cockroaches ran the maze alone 
or paired with another cockroach. So Zhang found that the presence of members of the same species as either co-actors, so if they participated in the race, or observers, such as the audience cockroaches, increased the running time in the easy maze but decrease the time in the difficult maze relative to the running times in the alone condition. So these findings were interpreted as support for the drive hypothesis of social facilitation. Specifically that the presence of an audience, whether it is cockroaches or human beings, increases general arousal states and that arousal facilitated dominant responses and impaired non-dominant responses. So a dominant response here would be in the easy maze they completed faster, a dominant response in the difficult maze would be that they completed at a slower time. And that is exactly what Zhejong found. So the results of Zhejong's experiments in total were quite clear in that when we perform a simple task that we're familiar with in front of a crowd or with competitors, we are able to perform better. The presence of a social group facilitates our performance. However, when we perform complex tasks that we're not familiar with or we have a little practice with, our performance decreases. And this is what Sajon called social inhibition. So you can either have social facilitation or social inhibition. So another important phenomenon to understand in the context of social psychology, along with social facilitation effects and social inhibition effects, is the idea of social loafing. And now social loafing is the phenomenon of a person exerting less effort to achieve a goal when they work in a group than when they work alone, because they know that the group will pick up the slack that they are not contributing towards the goal. So there's a very quick overview of the idea of social facilitation and one of my absolutely most favorite social psychology experiments just because the junk used cockroaches and not students. Let me know what you think about the theory of social facilitation and social loafing and social inhibition. And as always, remember to um, drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.